Since this set was working quite well, I decided that I would completely restore it and put it into one of my existing Admiral sets that has an unrestored chassis. Most likely my blonde 30A16, which has a nice all original chassis in it that I have not touched. And I kind of would like to restore it someday, but in the meantime I could just slide this one right into it and have a functioning set, so why not? One thing I'm not too crazy about on this set though is the pitcher tube has definitely seen a lot of use if you recall when I tested it. I had to let it run for a while to get, get just up into the green and I can tell when I turn this on it takes a little while to warm up and when you turn the set off the raster and the dot just immediately are gone. There's no, there isn't that usual dot that slowly fades away and the life test on this wasn't so hot so even though it's you know, installed in 56, I got a feeling this set saw a lot more use after that. Now as far as the recapping goes, I did uh, just a quick and dirty job. I did not restuff the electrolytic cans, for example. I just stuck in the electrolytics down below. And I used the generic yellow caps for the most part. But the <laughs> interesting thing is, between the end of the last video and now, there is essentially no difference in performance whatsoever. So even though I replaced all of these goopy old wax caps, didn't really change the performance at all. <laughs> and uh, the electros, other than the electrolytic on the vertical output tube that was causing me to have some bad linearity and height issues, replacing the others really didn't make any difference either. So I still have weak audio, which is what I want to tackle in this video. So uh, I will uh, pull out the audio IF cans and check for bad mica caps inside. I already did a slight uh, just by ear adjustment of the IF coils. They all seem to be peaked already. No significant difference. Because I'm looking for significantly more volume, not just a slight adjustment. So I'm hoping I've got a mica cap that's draining away some of the audio. Now that I've replaced the paper caps, I thought it might be a leaky paper cap. Uh, limiting the audio, or maybe uh, like an electrolytic in the audio output too, but nope, they've all been replaced, no change. So I also wanted to point out is I got a comment about how much current the set was drawing. Uh, that was not because that resistor was frying. These sets draw that much current, so when I turn this on right now, check this out. I'm on the 4 amp scale, which is the one with the red line on it here. So when I turn this on, yeah, it jumps up to 2 amps. And then it drops down as the tubes start to warm up, and then it would slowly climb back the other way and settle in at a little over 2 amps. And the wattage is on the scale below. So yeah, we're looking at a little over 250 watts. So that's how much a little 10 inch black and white TV draws. Or at least the higher quality ones. The uh, this has a pretty high tube count, just like the RCA 630TS. Both draw a lot of current just from all the tube filaments. So here's where the audio is at right now. It's, which isn't terrible, but... Oh, that's interesting. There's a huge drop-off in volume. Because I was about to say that that seems louder than I recall. This is this is how I'm used to hearing the audio, where with the volume up all the way, it's pretty bad. So I wonder if that's from the silver mica caps. As I've read, I've read about the the phenomenon is that the silver grows like dendrites, like little tendrils that are uh, caused by electro migration. In other words, the electric field caused the silver ions to migrate across the surface of the mica until the silver actually makes contact with the other side of the capacitor and they short out and when they short out the capacitor returns to being a functioning one and the set can work right for a while until slowly those contacts pull together again and short out and then you get poor performance or is it an issue with something heating up like I saw in the RCA 630TS well I could figure that out with some cold spray that that was interesting. I have not heard that much volume coming out of the set so far. And now back to really weak sound. 
huh, I'll let this set cool down for a while and uh, and try firing it up and see if I get good volume. Okay, I let this set cool down for a while and just turned it back on. Volume's much louder, albeit distorted. So I'm going to play for a little while and see if it cuts out again. Tapping the IF cam to see if it would make any difference. First audio in tube, audio output tube. Now, even though it's fairly loud now, it's not as loud as I think it should be, plus it's got a lot of horrible noise in the background. After about 15 minutes, I can't reproduce the problem. And these intermittent problems are the worst of all to try to track down. Um, I guess I'll cycle the power a few times and see if I can get the problem to uh, to reoccur. And uh, whether I can or not, I'm still going to take a look inside that IF can. Well, the sound just cut out completely, so... Now I'm really puzzled as to what's going on. Yeah, now it's back. I cleaned the pins on the tuner drum. So I don't know if there's an intermittent connection somewhere. What the deal is. I carefully unsoldered the four wires going to the audio IF coil. Managed to melt a wire going up to the tuner though, so I'm going to replace this wire. So it burned right through the insulation. That'll happen. Alright, so it's ready to come right out. Now to get inside this sucker, I need to bend back this little bit of metal here on either side and then push this down it'll come out the bottom Let's see if I can do that. okay I don't want to use a tool if I don't have to because I don't want to crush this with too much force Alright, screwdriver can be helpful on these two. Oh, this one's being real stubborn. On the bottom of it, and it's just those clips on the top. Ok, 
keep happening is I get one side going and the other side <laughs> pops out. Yeah, finally. And there it is. Crappy exposed mica capacitor. At least they're nice enough to stamp a 30 on it so you know what the value is. That looks kind of ugly underneath. So that would be your corroded silver plating there on the mica. Now I don't know what those kind of marks are there. If you guys can see that. I don't know that when the silver mica disease, as they call it, I don't know if that's really visible to the naked eye, but it does look kind of weird that there's the black silver oxide under some white marks right in here. Looks weird to me, so. Alright, I'm going to get that out of there. Hopefully I've got a spare 30 pico ferret on hand, otherwise I'll have to uh, figure something out. Uh, something too is a little blob of something up here. Might just be stray solder. Hmm. Anyways, to get these out, what I'm going to do is just nip them out slowly, carefully. I do not want to damage the wires or the posts or anything. I want to first start in the middle to relieve stress off of either side. Then I can nibble them away independently, more aggressively. And uh, I'm real careful. I've done this a couple times before. So if you nibble it around enough, you can heat this up and get the whole thing off because it is soldered on. There's kind of a metal collar around the middle there. Definitely want to take your time on these. So will this fix my low audio or disappearing audio problem? I don't know, but I figure it couldn't hurt. So reassemble the shield and pop it back in. Oh, it goes on this way. <laughs> so the notches fit around the threaded shaft. Okay, when I turned the set on, I had sound briefly, and then I cut out entirely. So instead of uh, clunking the channel, I don't think it had anything to do with the tuner. I think when I clunked the channel tuner before, it just put a shockwave through the chassis, which jostled whatever the problem was. So I'll try to do it a little more systematically this time. So volume, 
no effect. Contrast. Not affecting the volume. So here's the audio connection. Right there. Here's the volume control. Tap the IF can. Nope. Wiggle the IF tubes. So we'll change the channel clunker again. Well, I'll try to find tuning first. No, well, I didn't fix it that time. Ah. It's a speaker connection. No, because I put that new mic cap in there, although it's 30 picofarad, I think it was plus minus 2%. Odds are pretty good that. It's not uh, going to be exactly the same value as the old one, so I'm going to tweak this coil a little bit. There's a slug on the top and the bottom. I'll just do it by ear. What I'm going to do is when I put on a program where they stop talking and from the right. Why I'm stupid set. Because I've got an extra bag. No, 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 I'm cool. Oh, Come, tell me more. Anyway, this fisherman told me his boat was just... pretty much a non-stop noise going. That's definitely louder. Much louder. You know, Jughead, I'm here doing research on a really exciting, weird mystery. What you think about is who to ask for a date. Well, this is Pelican Cove, where the beach party will be. But this is also where the So I think the audio was cutting out before because of a flaky connection here on the speaker like there <laughs> so I'll clean up those pins and I think that mica cap definitely helped background noise seemed to have decreased quite a bit well, something else I want to take a look at is this contrast control I turn the contrast up 
young gal who would sweep me really off distorts the picture. I gotta keep the contrast really low. Or it starts getting all wavery on the edges, like the horizontal hold is not stable. Kind of looks like uh, 60 hertz ACs. It's like ripples getting into the circuitry. It makes it tough to get a bright picture with high contrast. Now, first thing I'll do is there are still a couple electrolytics I have not replaced in the separate chassis. So, like in the power supply, what I've done is I've cut wires going to the filter cans and installed electrolytics where I found it convenient. Like here's a vertical output tube and uh, multi section cap for it was way over here. I just cut that wire out and mounted it right on the tube. So one lead goes to ground and one goes to the cathode on it. Well, I haven't done that for all of them. I'm still using, I think, one section on this guy and a couple down here. So I'll get those out and uh, these two as well, which is uh, used for a, a low, like, minus 6 volt supply, which I believe is used... For biasing, yeah, and the contrast circuit. So there's that selenium rectifier and a 50 microfarad electrolytic. It goes up to one end of the contrast. So, and there's there's the other one. So if those aren't doing their job, it could be a little bit of hum getting into the AGC bus.